In this short video, we will talk about three confusing concepts, dependence, correlation, and orthogonal of two random variable x and y. In particular, this y will be a function of x. So here are our four main conclusions. First, x and hx are not independent for all possible function h and um, any possible random variable x. Second, since x and hx are not independent, uh, we seek the weaker concept and ask the question whether they are correlated. The third point, we further investigate orthogonal and say that orthogonal is not a stronger concept of uncorrelated. And actually, all this, pos all this combination can happen, which means one random variable can be orthogonal, the other can be correlated or uncorrelated, one can be non-orthogonal, and the other one can be correlated or non-correlated, and vice versa. And the last point is saying, so independent means that two random variable does not have any forms of dependency, and uncorrelation means that they do not have linear dependency. That's why correlation is a weaker concept of independent. And uh, we try to show that by some plots. And in the viewpoint of both in this function and in the viewpoint of data. So our first point is saying um, x and hx are not independent. So usually from we need to judge from the definition of independence saying uh, the joint distribution of x and y should be equal to the multiplication of um, the marginal fx and fy. But for here, we do not need to know the density function of x. This can be true for all possible fx because for every realization of random variable x, we know the realization of y because y is equal to hx. That means that knowing x provides us extra information about y. So x and y are dependent. Because if x and y are independent, knowing the value of x should give us no information about y. So our second point is to look at whether x and hx are correlated or not. So first, the definition says two random variables are uncorrelated if they are covariance, which equal to exy minus exey is zero. So let's see some um, see that from some examples. First, let's assume that we have a random variable x, which is a uniform distribution on the interval minus one to two. And this h function will be a square uh, a square function of x. Then we say whether this random variable x and y are correlated or not. So by the definition, we can compute exy equal to this. We can compute ex and ey, and then you find the covariance of x and y is not equal to zero, so they are correlated. Okay. Let's now look at another case with a slight change. So now it's still a random variable x uniform distribution, but now it's de de defined on minus one to one. So it's the same quadratic function, and what we want to say is uh, what the relationship of random variable y and x. So you can in the same way, you compute exy equal to zero, and you compute ex, ey, and you find that covariance is actually equal to zero, which means that they are uncorrelated. So that is interesting because we have the same x and same function. The only difference is that they are defined on different interval, and um, suddenly they change from correlated to uncorrelated. So the intuition is that uncorrelation means that as one of the two random variable increase, as the x increase, 
on average, the other one does not increase or decrease. So if you um, focus on the interval minus one to one, you find that this y is not is remain the same. But if you look at the interval from minus one to two, this y actually increase. So that's why the it's the concept of on average, so that's why the interval will matter. So for the third point, we look at a uh, orthogonal, and uh, first, the definition says two random variable are orthogonal if e x y equal to zero, and we use this notation. So the only relationship we can say about an um, um, uncorrelated and orthogonal is saying if x and y are uncorrelated, then if you shift by its mean, then they are orthogonal. So usually we tend to think that orthogonal is a stronger concept of uncorrelated, saying like if they are uncorrelated, this, equ uh, this equation is true, and further if ex y equal to zero, they are orthogonal. But actually, from the examples here, we show that all this for a uh, possible combination can happen. So we use the same examples as before, and we say the first one are not orthogonal because it's not equal to zero. The second one is equal to zero, so they are orthogonal. However, um, let's say if we choose the quadratic uh, function as this, with parameter this, they are orthogonal, but the co uh, co covariance is is not equal to zero, which means that they are actually correlated. So we can have orthogonal, um, we can have two random variable orthogonal, but correlated or uncorrelated, and also can have now orthogonal and uh, correlated, and all this possible situation can happen. So finally, um, as a, as before, we have said that uh, if this co covariance equal to zero, then that means that they are uncorrelated. And if there is not equal to zero, means they are correlated. But we want to give a, a quantified measure of how correlated they are. So that's why we'll introduce the correlation efficient, Rxy, which is a normalized uh, measure of covariance. So it will be a scalar with um, uh, bigger than minus one, less than one. And this coefficient will be a measure of the strength and the direction of the linear relationship between two random variables. So we have the same plot here. X axis will be the value of random variable X. Y axis will be the value of random variable Y. So um, if Rxy equal to zero, the covariance equal to zero, they are uncorrelated. So it seems like very messy. And uh, if e equal to one, then it means that they are linearly are uh, dependent, and also they are the the relationship is positive, which means that if x increase, y also increase. If it's equal to minus one, then it's also highly linear, but it's negative relationship, which means if x increase, y should decrease. And for all the value between, it becomes less linear. And uh, we use the same example of our function. So now hx will be a linear function kx. So and then and then now the, this x doesn't need to be uniform distribution. Um, and we say this x r x y will be equal to one. And if this y is minus is equal to minus kx then rxy will equal to minus one. So exactly what we show here. And uh, on, as we have said before, another well point 
is from the data viewpoint because in real life, it's not likely that we be, are able to know some day. Uh, we are unable to know the the point with some um distribution. What we can observe is a lot of data x i and y i. So each point will be the co. Uh, we'll have the coordinate of x i and y i. So in the data viewpoint, this r x y this correlation coefficient have to compute in the empirical measure of the covariance and the variance in, in in this way. So, so how do they, these two viewpoints are combined together? And we will use a MATLAB to show their relationship as below. So first, um, we have a uniform random variable x defined on interval minus 1 to 1. And this y will have the quadratic function as we said before. And um, this, if this n is actually how many data points you generate. If this one is large enough, then you can see the correlation coefficient of x and y will converge to zero. And if you um, plot the scatter of x and y, this is the realization of x, this is the realization of y, you have the plot of this. And this, is, this means that they are uncorrelated. It's actually the same of this plot, but they look very different. But they both have, uh, but but they both means that the random variable x and y are uncorrelated. However, let's try to make some changes. If we change the interval from um a uh, one to a hundred, so with the same um setting of quadratic functions, then you see that the correlation coefficient will vary will, will, will converge to one. And if you plot the scatter point of x and y, then it will be highly linear and also the relationship is positive. Because this Rxy is very likely to be one. And um, if you choose a equal to minus 100, and all the settings the same, the quadratic function, and you compute the correlation function, if this n go to infinity, this rxy should convert to 1, minus 1, and you see that it's very linear, but this time it's negative um, linear, just as we have shows here and here. So that's all, and hope you like it.